question? Thank you. Okay. Um, we are going to speak about X-ray absorption spectroscopy, a short review. Um, anyway, I start. If you have any questions, just uh, wave your hands. I will stop. I will answer, maybe. So, okay. But anyway, if you stop me if you if you want uh, some, uh, some, some thing you understand because uh, it's better than to ask questions at the end, we have to come back. So, uh, a little bit of history just uh, for fun. And then the general expression of the absorption coefficient which is important. And then we will go to exhaust and, uh, little, and at the end, not at the end, but almost at the middle, go to the real world. Uh, which is a little bit more complicated than like this. Um, this is um, uh, what is uh, has been shown by Valerie is typically um, an absorption edge of silver metal. You see uh, what how it looks. It just detects a fall of metal between. Uh, one that uh, I not and the two detectors, one before the circle, one after. You take the logarithm of the ratio I not of I, and this is true in X rays, it's true in visible, it's true everywhere. everywhere. Okay? But you see that this is quite strange. Uh, I'm going to tell you about that. It's just something that we have to explain that, and we have to explain. Why that is interesting to see. Um, if I need to you that uh, X-ray has been discovered by uh, in, uh, in 1895 by Raiden, and actually the end you saw on the uh, on the side of Valerie was not the end of Raiden, it was the end of his wife. It was why not to put his end, but at the end of his wife. It's a, and that, but. Uh, uh, almost 20 years after, the first absorption experiment has been done because before that, diffraction was a little bit understood and you could monochromatize uh, the, the beam coming from an X ray tube by uh, some uh, kind of monochromator, usually with quartz. Um, quartz, uh, because the quartz was only. Very, very good, good crystal, but it was not at this time. And you see, you see that this, uh, okay, this uh, kind of absorption it means that uh, at the, after the monochromator, after the server, it was a photographic prep, and then, at the, which was, which is uh, shown here. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, you see that? This is uh, what uh, is recorded on the photo on the on the um, photographic plate, and then it was uh, just not digitalized but uh, uh, transcribed in uh, in something like that and absorption. Okay, ten years later, some uh, somebody chronic uh, actually it was in Groningen at this time, but then uh, he moved to Switzerland, I guess. And he recorded this spectrum, which was the spectrum of iron. And you realize the improvement of data acquisition, the data between the previous slide and the second. And he tried for, to understand all these wiggles here by using the brilliant zone of the, the structure of the material. He did not get something very good. And uh, nevertheless, these oscillations were called chronic oscillations for a long time. And uh, for maybe 40 years, the situation was a little bit quiet. Means that uh, you find uh, some once a while paper on absorption that try to, uh, people try to understand that it proved a little bit never. It was very, very interesting because uh, it was uh, a mystery. The oscillation of chronic was a little bit mysterious. Till uh, til, uh, 71, well, three guys, Edstein, a guy I, I, I 
system. It was not the guy at his time. He was a professor at the University of Washington. Derek Steyer was a student. And the firefighter was working with them, but he was at the Boeing lab in Seattle. And the, the, uh, the, the thesis of uh, Dell was to understand the structure of Germany, amorphous Germany. And since they tried, and Stern was quite wise in uh, electron uh, spectroscopy, things like that. So they did experiment. And uh, they realized that doing the Fourier transform of the, of the scissor wiggles that you saw at the beginning, and I'm going to give a little uh, we found he found something which was very close to the radial distribution function in the material. And that was the beginning. They removed the name of uh, Kronitz oscillation. They gave the name of X-ray absorption fine structure, exhaust. And at the, time, at the same time, two years later, the first beam line on, on the Stanford Cyclotron Laboratory delivered X-ray. And what took 40 days, I guess, uh, three weeks of uh, continuous uh, uh, data, acqu acquiring data on the uh, X ray tube in the Seattle, was done in 15 minutes on the big line, which was the third big line in Stanford. It was uh, the beginning of the boost of exhaust because, because it was fast. You could uh, get data in 15 minutes instead. To, to wait for uh, three weeks, because of the model I'm going to tell you, uh, this, it's a built a model that I'm going to explain to you, it was very easy to handle, and it was a technique, and it was okay. It was just uh, very simple uh, for 20 years, after, but uh, with some problems. And the, the last question about this technique was solved in maybe in 1990 by but, uh, a student of uh, of Stern was but, and other people they were working also in in Italy. Okay, so, so during the time between uh, Chronic and Stern and CS, people were just looking at these solutions of Chronic and Stern. They realized that it was not a property of a material. It was not only solid material, it was like a chronic uh, salt, chronic or salt, but it was a property of the solid material and the Fermi surface and the Brillouin zone, which was the generating the oscillation. And uh, during the period in the 30, 40, the people realized that no, it's not uh, only the, the material is not. He has nothing to do with that because you find oscillation in molecules. Some experiments uh, have been done in germanium tetrachloride and things like that in bromine. And they find, oh, okay, it's also oscillation. And there is no longer in Georgia. So it was a discussion, but the discussion said, okay, no, it's not a problem of the So in 1990, I come back again to the silver. Uh, uh, the silver absorption uh, here in red. And what we are going to be interested on is the excursion in green compared to the black uh, line, which is like that. You realize now that the black line is going to be the absorption coefficient of an isolate atom. Uh, while uh, the red one is the true absorption coefficient when the, the atom is involved in the material. Uh, I uh, be back here. And this is the best uh, proof. is an experiment which, uh, which has been done. Uh, we have done that in uh, well, quite a long time ago in neon. In neon, in two, two states, the gas in the cell, a very very small cell of neon with a low pressure of neon, and the, the, the same gas acts on the cryostat, and which is condensed. In that case, it's something which, uh, like a solid, is a, a cubic uh, center for CFC uh, solid. And you see that anyway, while it's almost flat, 
and with no oscillation in the gas because the gas neon is the, is the monotony gas. Is he has a lot of oscillation in the solid because in that case each atom of neon is surrounded by all other atom of neon. Okay. Now, what we have to explain? We have to explain that, and this is not uh, silver. Is uh, carbon is, is carbon silicon uh, carbide at the see around the, the edge. What we call the edge, and the edge is that. It means that is the green, which is a photon, has exactly the value which is between uh, the lowest level here. This is a, a schema scheme of the energy state of the of the atom the silicon in the, if uh, the, the the energy of the photon is exactly the same that the difference in energy between the lowest level and the vacuum in that at least uh, one electron can be promoted to the vacuum and in that case, there's a photon in a storm, but maybe it's a, a, a quite a, a little bit answer on your question. A photon is absorbed. There is no more photon. The absorption will increase. Okay. Now, if you are before this, and this is uh, this uh, this part here is called the edge. It's, uh, it makes sense. It's edge and then edge. That's all. It's just a straight line going up. And if uh, if the, the photon has a too low an energy, it cannot remove an electron from the, the lowest level. It can remove an electron from here, but it's not very interesting, except in some cases. And so the absorption is flat and, and, uh, and very and low. Now, if you are above the edge here, the photon is, has an energy quite large compared to the difference here. In that case, the electron is left in the, in the medium with some energy, which is the difference uh, between this energy and the vacuum level here. And then you have so what is called exhaust, or so this oscillation. And we have to explain that. And we have to explain that with something which is very fundamental. That's the only uh, equation you will see, almost. All, the only one. But this one is important because it's, it rules all the absorption process in the, in the world. You can uh, you, you eat something with an electron, with a neutron, with a photon, etc., etc., with a with a car. Uh, you have all the Fermi absorption uh, golden rule, which rules the transition between an initial, an initial state, which is C one, uh, and the final state, which is C one or C one. So you understand? No problem. And there are things which are important. It is uh, Fermi. It's called. That's why it's called Golden. Very important. He, uh, don't take. Don't care about that. It's not important. Don't care about the sun. It's, uh, it has to be on all the sun. But what is important is the following. This is the initial step, and the, the perturbation in that case is a photon field. The electric. Uh, a field of the photon which hits the atom, it will make the transition to, to the transition to the final state. Okay, and this is a delta function which says that the difference between the final state and the initial state is equal to the energy of the photon. It means that what we are going to when when whatever the, uh, is going to be to happen to an electron in the process we are interested on. Is an elastic process. All process are elastic. The photon keeps its energy. If it's losing its energy, it's losing its memory, it's no longer used for the exam. It's participated to the absorption process. The electron, which are doing only as elastic, uh, elastic uh, uh, motion in the medium, are very uh, 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 a few compared to the number of electrons which are at the end generated by the absorption process. But the whole, we don't care because they are lost. They are not lost for the absorption, they are lost for the process exhaust. Okay? You will see why. So, uh, so okay. 
and then what is the exact formula? I uh, here I put again this uh, uh, called Fermi rule, and we have to uh, actually we have to uh, take the difference, the ratio in all, between the red curve and the black curve. Renormalize by, by the black curve because we have to take, we have to think about per atom and not a collection. It does, uh, is just to, to make a system independent of the size of the beam of the number of atoms. Okay, so the initial state here, we know it is the initial state is a very well, is a one S electron in the, in the atom, is well known. You have a table, uh, big, big uh, pack of uh, tables, all the coefficients. You, you can calculate all the wave function for every atom. Each atom was a red atom of uh, all the atoms. You can calculate all the uh, wave function. It's something which is very well known. And is very concentrated in the center of the atom. It's very near the neighbor, or at least the one S electron. But uh, the, the electron which is in the middle is different. This one is, uh, is, is a wave, it's left inside of the end. So what is, is, uh, what is going? This electron is going to hit the atom around here. It's going to, to hit uh, the atom, to be scattered by the atoms, and the other atoms, and so on, and so on. The place is uh, all life. It's uh, moving around. But, but he has always to keep his energy, the order and process of to be realistic. And at the end, we have to calculate the C's wave function back at the center atom here. Now, what uh, uh, Stern assumed and what is true at the end is that the process where the shorter terms, the shorter uh, travelers are the most important. You mean that uh, 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 traveling, the electron is going out, it's a one atom, it comes back. This is the most important process. The other one with uh, several legs like that are decreasing in intensity. I will explain why uh, in, a, in a short while, but uh, this was a, a, a little bit uh, assumption of CERN, which was a, a good assumption. So we have to, what we have to do is to calculate all the, all the wave functions uh, of these electrons playing, uh, doing a lot of elastic scattering in the middle. Now, what you have to do is just to consider the uh, uh, process between two atoms, one which has uh, absorbed the, the photon, and the other one which is scattered, scattered the electron back. And then it's true, it, it, what is good true for the red one will be true for this one, for this one, for this one. So we have to make the sum of all the process, but we are first, we are going to, uh, to just consider the back and forth. Okay, now the simple approach is the following. I, uh, this one, we, to start to understand what is uh, this uh, picture here. We have to understand what uh, the difference between the red curve and the black curve, which is, okay. So we take uh, one atom red, uh, why not? An atom black, a blue, which is uh, just a sign in the medium. It can be the same, it can be different. It can be copper and oxygen at the uh, side, or copper and uh, copper in the copper metal. But we study, we isolate two atoms because we are considering, we are going to consider only the back and forth process. And then you eat a cis atom, cis red atom by a photon, a green photon, and uh, where the electron is going away, is uh, uh, expanding outside the atom because the electron is ejecting, is, can be described as a uh, spherical wave, which is expanding outside the atom. Is a, a spherical wave. If you do really uh, quantum mechanics, is an anchor wave, but anchor uh, is close to the side. And uh, so 
we use, uh, doing that, we use an assigned way of expanding on that. Like if you throw uh, a stone in the lake, lake, you have a waves going away from the center. And so, what is something which is important is that from the from the F0, which is a state at, at the center, when the electron is inside, is inside the atom, when it goes through the potential, is uh, suffering of what is called a phase shift. I mean, its uh, uh, wave function is not uh, this one is not really perturbing; it just shifting the phase because of the, the process is elastic. So it just shift the phase, the wave is that, and the phase means that it's a little bit uh, phase shift, and not, uh, and not uh, the amplitude does not change, and it's just changing the phase. Okay, so we make another assumption, a spherical wave, uh, and here, which is at the beginning, it becomes a spherical wave, which is not easy to, to realize, but uh, not easy to handle. And at the end, we say, okay, <coughs> when it hits the atom here, it's no longer a spherical wave, it's a planar wave. A planar wave, you, you, you all the front, uh, it's something which is uh, which just uh, moving like that, not extending like that, but moving like a planar wave. Why we do that this approximation? Because we know the way to, to, to calculate the scattering of the planar wave by, by an atom. Uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of, uh, it, it's an actually box. And even if the distance here between the two atoms is two of the order of a few inch terms, three, two, three, four inch terms, the approximation of uh, uh, approximating the ankle by the spherical and same parallel plane wave works. is a long is distance between atoms is large compared to the distance of the wavelength of the so now is cut one part, one part is cut in red by the blue atom and comes back. It comes back and is cut so, and what happened to this F0, which was at the beginning? It was affected by the delta L here, going this way. And then he has to travel. So he has a new phase shift described by this exponential here. And then his, his, his back scattered, that's why it's written part here. And the, the scattering is described by the function F which is which can be calculated I means that is uh, numerically not numerically it can be calculated with that the expression can give i didn't uh, give it to you but it's well known and then it comes back in red to to the beginning because it has, be, it has to be calculated at the center and going back in the center here if he suffer another phase shift which is the same that this one you understand what it, that's the model that Stern, uh, say, yes, uh, but uh, in 72 almost. Uh, and then uh, you will see, it, the, 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 you will, opt, uh, we will obtain an expression which is not very complicated, which can be handled and uh, makes exact something which is very useful. And then I will. Uh, show you that uh, it was simple. There are problems, but the problem now, we know the way to solve it. So if we put that all together, you see that the F at the end is F naught plus a sum of delta F, which is a result of the scattering, of the scattering by uh, the atom, which is uh, just a sign. Is, okay. And then you have delta F is, uh, so you see, you recognize the f of pi, the two kr back and forth, the delta one, one going out, one going in. Uh, phi is the phase associated to the amplitude f, and this is a, a term of, I'm not going to distract, I will uh, show you the effect of this term. 
is an angular factor of the future, of the weather, of the weather future. We did not care about because we are addressing back and forth, but we, we have to keep him. So, and we obtain the formula for the oscillation. That's exact. Okay? Now, there is uh, at the end of the uh, difficult process of uh, quantum mechanics, almost. If you have any question, that's a uh, tell now because after it will be too late. <laughs> no, no, but uh, do you do you want I come back to something that uh, no? You just fine. Okay. Now, at this simple uh, expression which was this describing only the effect of two atoms, we have to make some more some computations. If there are many atoms, we have to solve because all the processes are independent. Okay, there is uh, all the process uh, uh, back and forth process of with one atom is independent of the, uh, another atom and so on and so on. So we have to make a, a sum of all the equivalent processes. Uh, second, which is really important, and that exactly why um, and Stern and Sayer. Went at the end to the formula that the platform has a link, uh, let's speak a little bit in the medium. If you if you let an, uh, an electron go in the medium, he has a, a, a link elastic wind people after a while, after a, in average, a uh, uh, free pass word, that is called lambda, usually. He loses his memory. He loses because he is eating a lot of atom and losing his, uh, his stress in doing energy. So it's not for the process that we just have described. Okay? He can eat the phonons, he can eat something, but he's lost. And he has a limit, an, an elastic mean free pass lambda. And this mean free pass is short. You will see uh, the shape of the mean free pass is very short. The electron cannot go very far. It is limited to the first, uh, uh, the very local or around the atom which has been eaten. That's why I, uh, there is exact. If uh, this uh, mean free pass elastic, not inelastic, not inelastic, but elastic, keeping it in a particular if it was large, you will have a contribution of all atoms. Uh, from all the other media. And in that case, you will have uh, you will have a sum of many, many, many sine waves with different uh, KR here. And at the end, it will be an average zero to almost nothing. That because of the mean free pass is very limited, is very short. That uh, this sum here, the sum we have to put to all that is limited to uh, the first shell, the second shell, the third, but not more. Okay. We have to uh, take care of, we are not uh, working at uh, the zero, absolute, absolute zero. We are uh, working at some temperature, which is not zero. So all the atoms are moving because of phenomena and things like that. We have, so it means that the distance is going to move like that. Is not fixed, it's going to be uh, oscillating a little bit. And uh, so we have to take care of that. And we maybe sometimes, but it can be interesting, take care of uh, the cosine square theta that uh, I, I skip. This is what is the. Okay. This uh, is term. Speak, uh, I told you that uh, the, the mean free pass will affect the exhaust with a, with a, uh, 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 a term like that. I will be back on this mean free pass later because it's important. But uh, let's uh, just uh, what is going on about uh, thermal effects and so on and so on. Uh, that's because an absorption is uh, typically 10 to the minus 15 seconds. It's a very short. Vibration is 10 to the minus 12. The phonon frequency 
um, in the order 10 to the minus 12. And the counting time is uh, of the order people fast, like uh, Valerie takes uh, is 10 to the minus 3 seconds, even uh, a little bit more, but typically it's one second. So we have to make an average around about all these vibrations during the time we count one point. So, and that uh, is exactly the same kind of process which affects the diffraction. It's called the bioler term of C shape that uh, the bioler uh, describes its effect on the temperature on diffraction, uh, on diffraction uh, uh, results. And here is the same as uh, the sigma. Yeah, is not the same as that in the in the case of the function. It's uh, almost twice because there are a pass which is back and forth. While in the diffraction, there is only one pass. Uh, polarization effects. Uh, so we are working on synchrotron radiation. Usually, most of the time, the electric field is horizontal. Okay. And the uh, cosine theta describes the, the angle between the electric field and the direction of the, of the atom. Okay? So depending where is the atom, it can be a very, you can feel the result because the electric field is like that, the atom is here, the atom of the absorbing atom is here, the scatter is there, so the cosine, the cosine is equal to zero, so you kill the result. And this is important. You kill the gas in all atoms that are got to kill and you have no reason. But it's interesting because in that case, we can have an idea of the polarization of the structure because of that. Okay. But if you, if you, uh, if you are running on the, uh, something which is very symmetric or zone red, sorry, there is no axis uh, or axis are equivalent. In that case, the, the average of cosine theta is equal to one term. If you take the average of the whole space, and the, so one term kills the tree, and you have just one for one atom, and n for n atom. So at the end, we have that. That the, the, is the same is the, is the, the formula that uh, make in blue and red. And what is interesting is the following. You have some terms which, is, which are called atomics. It depends only on the atoms. It's a, the, it's the atom which has absorbed the photon, the atom which has scattered the, 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 the electron, scattering by F and by the phase F here. Uh, the atom which has absorbed the photon has affected the process by the two theta. Okay. And then you have the terms which are structural, mean that uh, distances, uh, number of layers, uh, degree of dissolve. The dissolve can be, look at that, the dissolve can be only thermal, but it's also it can be structural in the, in the amount of material. The uh, distance are a little bit the same, but not exactly the same like in the crystal. So uh, there are a little bit different, it's exactly the same that the uh, uh, process, uh, thermal process. So you mean that, uh, assume that you, can, you know the fine, uh, the, blue, the, the, the blue terms here, you can just calculate the R here, the number of neighbors and, uh, and the, the Bible. So it means that this is a, that's why it's a, really, it's a structure, it's a structural tool. And you, you have to sum of, or several atoms around the central one, what is called the central, which has absorbed the photon. But if you know that, you if you know the blue, you know the red. And it was, uh, at the beginning, it was uh, 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 the kind of uh, uh, way to analyze the data it was used. Uh, doing an experiment on a very well-known compound, crystal, in that case, you knew, you knew the red terms, distance, number of one level. You can calculate in that case, uh, the blue one. And then you go to something that you don't know, but you are interested in, and you apply, you, you use these blue terms to calculate 
and are which are not and non commutable. It's called the transfer of the effect. Okay, but what is important? And uh, that if that is a linear function of the wave vector of the electron, I recall you that the, at the end, the wave vector, the electron is considered as a plane wave. And then in that case, uh, he has a wave vector k, which is related to his energy e equals uh, k square, in, uh, depending on the. Uh, if, you, if that is linear, is, a, is just a linear function of k. If you make the Fourier transform, will, you will have peaks at the distance, interatomic distance, the true interatomic distance, shift a little bit by the slope of this, um, of the dependence of uh, the phase with k. So you have a radial distribution function of the, your material. A little bit, uh, you know, trans but uh, he said you have a peak at the first, at the, at the first distance, a peak at the second one. That's what, what uh, Stern SAS later realized in the And that's what uh, the, okay, the, the exhaust had uh, so much success because a Fourier transform is something which is really, really easy to handle. At the time of uh, Sayers and Leiter, Make a Fourier transform of the data was uh, taking about uh, two days uh, in computers. Now it's something like uh, half, uh, uh, you know, some milliseconds or something like that. It's nothing. You, you, you press a return and you have the Fourier transform. Okay, so what is uh, the way to analyze the data? This uh, I, is not silver, it's not uh, silicon carbide. It's a titanium oxide, it's just to show you that you can do. You see, silver, it was, excuse me, silver, the, the edge was 24 kilovolts. Silicon, the edge was 1.8 kilovolt. And now, in the case of titanium, in the retail, the edge is 5 kilovolts. So, this is the, the red curve, is experimental curve. You have to model the pre edge. The post edge by some uh, numerical expression or some, some which has been uh, already calculated, we uh, call Victorine for the pre edge. And then uh, the post edge has to be modeled by the curve which goes the best through all the situations. It can be done by different ways. Uh, and then you have to normally normalize the result the red minus the, the black by the step here at the edge because you calculate by the per atom and the, the edge of the edge here is a proportional to the number of atoms that the photon uh, beam has eaten and here we tell we have to normalize matter to have exactly per atom okay now when you have that you obtain an exact Easy. That's uh, just a difference uh, ratio, and then you make the Fourier transform. And this is true. It's not. Uh, it's not a joke. It's not something I. I just uh, play with the computer. It's really uh, data exhaust and the Fourier transform. And you see titanium oxygen, which is normal. That's the first share. There are six oxygen atom on the titanium, and then you have the, the, the uh, second levels and third levels, which are titanium. I turn it right on, and another CN. And then you see that after that, normally we don't care because it's probably is uh, is is on the north is uh, a little in some cases it can be used, but in the case of titanium, it's not. In some cases it can be used, but in some in some special uh, cases, for instance, you are working on errors, and uh, at the ESRF. Uh, in one big line, a guy did the, the K edge of Serion, which is 50 kilovolts. So you have a huge exact data, uh, huge, and you can make a Fourier transform, and you have um, a lot of uh, peaks corresponding to all the all the shares in Serion oxide, and it, it was uh, and it was fantastic, but it was just a joke, uh, just to play. And then you what you do. You, you want to 
to remove what is junk? You want to remove what is noise, or you have to remove what is uh, the second, the tertiary, and so on, because you are interested on the first one. So you do Fourier filtering. You keep the oscillation corresponding to one atom, which is in that case the oxygen, and then you fit with that. And then doing fit fitting with that is not too difficult. Uh, fitting program are very powerful now. But we have to know the phase shift f of pi and the phase shift, and this was for a long time in the program. Okay. Uh, how much I, uh, I don't remember. Uh, half, an huh? half an hour. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Even a bit more to start the game. No, I have it. Okay. You know, nip and nip. So, uh, uh, from an experimental point of view, you uh, is a is a problem. It's a problem is to be linked to synchrotron facility. It's not a problem now because I already show you the number of synchrotron facility we have in the world. We are not very far, uh, except if you are uh, Ushuaia or uh, Cape Town. You are not far from uh, a synchrotron facility. You can apply when you are going to to Venus, to Soleil. You are prepared for the problem, so uh, it's just a problem to make a uh, proposal and well, a proposal to support. But ne nevertheless, it's oh, okay. You have to, uh, it's linked to, to, uh, to a larger facility. What is interesting is that the interaction between a photon and matter is light, it's not very, very light. But is not very strong. Uh, neutrons have a very strong uh, interaction with matter. Means that to make an experiment, the transmission with neutron is not easy. You have the electrons is the same. Electrons are more than neutrons. I did a mistake. No, not neutrons are not interesting. But electrons, for instance, are a, ve have a, a very very high uh, interaction with matter. So if you do an, absor an absorption experiment in the microscope, electron microscope, you have, you have to, to prepare very, very thin samples, which is not easy first, and maybe it's, it's not meaningful, because if you, it's too thin, maybe it has nothing to do with the, real, uh, with the truth, with the reality. In, that, in the case of the, uh, uh, photons, it's, it's uh, just in between. Uh, so um, samples are easy to make not too difficult to make, not easy to, to handle, and so that's very, very important. And you can do a lot of experiments, a lot of different experiments. You can do experiments when you, your sample is in, in the cell. The cell, uh, for instance, if you want to, to work on the liquid, on the gas, and like that, you can make a cell, or in catalysis where you have gases which are not very, very, uh, uh, a little bit aggressive, you can make a cell, a cell with uh, windows, and not difficult to do, not too much difficult to do, and you can make a new experiment. You can make experiment in ultra high vacuum because uh, there is no, because of the photon travels in the ultra high vacuum, easy, more easily than in the air, I will not show you. You can make experiment uh, by uh, in sample submit to high pressure. And this is new. This is relatively new in that sense that uh, now, like in Lucia and some other uh, beam lines, the photon can be focused to very, very small spots of the order of two or three microns. In that case, the system can go through um, diamond cells where you can put your sample and apply a very, very high pressure. And this because the photon can travel through the diamond of the, uh, of the window. Uh, let not worry. Okay. Uh, it's simple. You So I, I think it's a very simple data acquisition. I will show what uh, it is, uh, but you will see tomorrow. And it's, it's fast. Now it's fast. Uh, it's a fast. Uh, you, you, you can, after a week of uh, beam time at Soleil, you can go back home with uh, hundreds of, uh, of uh, sample or spectrum. So it's uh, one spectrum takes uh, 10 minutes, five minutes. Uh, 
what is important is that it's a chemical and orbital selectivity. The chemical selectivity has been the main point for the success of it. While you scan the energy of the electron, of the photon, there is one energy which corresponds to the edge of one interactor, one kind of atom. Copper is 8.9 kilovolts, silicon is 1.8, uh, silver is 24 kilovolts. So you can isolate the characteristic, the, the, the response of one atom by the photon by its edge. And this is very important. When you do, if you want to, to if you make, a, if you want to make a, a local order experiment uh, during uh, X-ray diffusion, you will set a few steps later, but you get all the parameters in the photon. You got, you get everything. You have to, at the end, you have to, you know, to separate what is, uh, what, what is who means that you have at the same time. Uh, the distance between A and B, and mm -hmm. also the strength between B and A, which is not easy to, 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 to handle. In the case of example, you take, you put your, your, your experiment and your beam line, uh, as a beam line, your photon energy exactly at the edge or around the edge of the atom A. So you will have the distance of B compared to A, or C compared to A, and so on and so on. So you split the radial distribution function in many uh, many data, and this is very interesting. Uh, another example, and it was also uh, one of the reasons of the success at the beginning of the exams, is that, uh, for instance, in biology, in my, uh, metalloprotein, hemoglobin, and so on. Uh, hemoglobin is carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, maybe, but iron. And most of the process interesting in the hemoglobin when you break is iron. People uh, know that the iron is going up and down uh, from the in cycle when uh, breathing, when uh, with oxygen and non oxygen. And it was attracting. Uh, exact was very attractive for these people doing that kind of job because they, they say, okay, I'm looking uh, at the iron edge and I will see what is the environment of the iron when I put oxygen and when I remove oxygen and so on and so on. Actually, it never was. Uh, it was so difficult to have a, a true answer that I don't think that the exact did a, a good job. Another very very, very, um, at the beginning of our exhaust was uh, another field which was very attractive, was a catalyst. That uh, heterogeneous catalysis is a small, very small cluster of so platinum, uranium, uh, and so on, dispersed in uh, alumina, ceria, and so on. If you do uh, scattering, if you do diffraction, what you see is the support. In the races in alumina, cerium, and, uh, and the platinum, which are very cluster of 10 uh, angstrom uh, of diameter, 15 angstrom, you don't see them. Why? If you do exhaust, you, look, you, you set your, uh, your, your experiment to the platinum edge, in that case, you look at the environment of the platinum and what is going on with the platinum when you do uh, bad things uh, with uh, the catalysis. Okay, and this was at the beginning, it was maybe the most attractive fields to use exhaust. And now we have been expanded uh, expand to many, many different things, fields. Uh, if you look at the number of applications uh, in exhaust, uh, it was almost uh, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2 between uh, 1920 to 1940. And then it start to increase uh, like uh, the COVID now, exponentially. Uh, and then it's a very, very, very sharp curve. And now it's ended of application per year with a good. Okay. Um, the, the data analysis is simple. With the formula I show you is simple, but actually it's just the beginning of something which is a little bit complicated. Um, the accuracy that the Maybe the problem. Uh, 
since uh, you have only uh, uh, in the, in the, an interference process between of uh, wave, uh, wave function of the electron between protons, like that, the accuracy cannot be very, very high. And actually, is of the order of 200 operations. It can measure if you if you if you make a different experiment by changing an, an experimental condition and look at the how a peak uh, the, the signature of one peak moves with a parameter you can go better than that but if you start from scratch okay it's typically 200 of an Einstein which is far above the, the, the accuracy of the diffraction but most of the case we don't use it we we don't use uh, exhaust when you can do a diffraction and the converse is true. Uh, the accuracy of the determination of the number data is not uh, is not okay. It's ten percent. The problem is an absorption technique. Okay, which I say is uh, is uh, good, is a good thing here. I describe that as a good thing, but is also a problem because the absorption. Uh, can have some problem sometimes. Um, the problem also is the analysis of the exhaust, the pure exhaust, is based on the uh, modeling F. And you see that the formula is a sum of sine wave. It's not difficult to find, to fit a sine wave with a sine wave. And you will find everything you want if you don't. Uh, realize that uh, you are not al alone in the world doing uh, this uh, uh, work like that. Uh, you have all the experiment coming from outside that can give you fences to say, no, uh, the distance between the two atoms cannot be one kilometer. So there have to be something like a two inch line. You know, you have to think that uh, I did, uh, I, I said that, but it was at the beginning, it was really a problem. Uh, some results in exhaust. Are, are completely crazy because uh, the people did not uh, realize that uh, the results were a little bit strange in terms of physics. Uh, uh, okay, I'm not going. Okay, uh, is a larger facility technique. I tell you, and now that's this problem, and this problem is a multiplicity technique. Okay. Okay, I just uh, well, okay, not uh, not really important. What is uh, how to how to make an experiment? You have a sample here. Uh, you go through the sample. You measure I not. You measure I. And say so if you make the log, you have directly the absorption, which is uh, really the definition of the absorption. But it has been proved that if you, you take uh, the fluo uh, spectrum of uh, your sample. Which has in that case silicon, calcium, and chromium. And you are interested on the site of the chromium. You isolate the chromium and then you count the intensity inside here, inside the small peak, as a function of the energy, like if you are doing absorption. And this is proportional to the absorption. Directly, the I of I naught is directly proportional to the absorption, like as well. And you also, there is also another technique. Which is also interesting, which is interesting when you do surface experiment, is called total electron. The electron, and this is uh, maybe an uh, answer, the electron is going uh, away from the atom. But he is, except uh, he is going to suffer a lot of uh, scattering. Scattering is lose his energy. By eating phonons, by eating, uh, by uh, making an OG process on the on a lot. And at the end, you will have a lot, a lot of electrons. Very uh, many, many electrons, much more, uh, thousand, even more than that, or electrons per atom which are being eaten. And then all these electrons, for a reason I will show you, are going out. That's a photoelectric effect. Einstein got the Nobel Prize, we call it that. If you collect all these electrons as a function of energy for all n, you mean there are four points or two points, all the energy, all angles, it has been proved experimentally and also theoretically that you have something which is proportional to the energy. 
a this is the technique which is interesting in some, talk, some cases, comparing the absorption, the, the result given by the fuel and the result given by the total electron in can be very interesting because the, solid, the mean free pass of the photon inside the material for a photon is much larger than the mean free pass of the electron going up. So you, you doing foot, uh, fuel, you probe a larger part of your sample. While during total electron heat, you just probe uh, the last uh, surface uh, part of your sample. And so sometimes it's interesting. Now, well, okay. Now uh, comes the most uh, important and uh, tricky part. I told you that uh, this is, uh, okay, the domain of uh, examples from electrons, from a field. 50 AV to uh, uh, and this is the mean free pass. I told you that the mean free pass is not huge. If you look at that, you see that is 10 inch time in the domain of uh, in this domain where you get the data. It's all the order of uh, five to 10 inch time. That's why I told you that uh, exhaust is just looking to the very problem. Okay. Now, if you look at the what is going on here? The mean free pass going, is going up, and at 20 EVs here is 100 electron. It means that the electron is going away, and then it can make a lot of uh, scattering like that. Is so, and that's called the type of scattering. And for uh, between 70 and 80, uh, 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 90, 70, and 90, 80, 89. Uh, People scattering of the of course, the people did not know how to end. They knew that it was very, very, very interesting because close to the edge here, here we are close to the edge. We are informed. We have information about the valence because we are just putting the, uh, the, the electron at the Fermi level where the valence plays a role, and we are also. So exploring a very large part of the of the same. And since people knew that it was very interesting, they did not know exactly how to handle it. And uh, it was uh, maybe 20 years ago, in the last 20 years, that uh, they start, uh, people start, uh, some people, uh, some papers got out and explained how to handle this new people scattering problem. It was uh, the, the work by people from uh, Frascati in, uh, in close to Rome and also at the Washington and also in, uh, in Grenoble. The, in Grenoble, uh, somebody called uh, um, Steve Jolie, uh, he, he makes a numerical uh, resolution of the Schrodinger equation in the potential. He is building the potential. Like that, he starts uh, from the structure, he builds the potential by adding up all the potential from, from strontium, from titanium, and so on. So, okay. And now he makes a, a numerical resolution of the Schrodinger equation uh, by, uh, you know, by a mesh, uh, building a mesh uh, uh, in all in the, in the cluster here and solving the Schrodinger equation, which is just uh, differential equations. The, the problem is that it's a huge problem. It's, it, need, it, needs, uh, it has not been solved this problem until a big computers, the fast computer, uh, have uh, made a job. And now, with the computers that we have at Soleil, uh, you can make one, uh, one uh, Running one per one program in one call like that uh, in one day, uh, maybe a few hours. Anyway, is limited to a very small part, uh, small environment around uh, the central atom. It's just looking in the very, very local order because it's too complicated. Um, people from uh, Frascati and then. Uh, John there from Washington had another uh, approach. Uh, and the approach was to make an approximation of the potential. 
I show you at the beginning that uh, uh, when the potential is uh, can be described as something which is the ground, when the electron is at home, it can be solved. That's why the blue and this also was used in uh, to, to calculate Fermi surface and so on. What is called the Murphy team means that the, pro, the, the, the potential which is here, you cut it. You say the, the part above one value which is very small is flat. So you have a, a Murphy team, what is called Murphy team in English, means that a flat with force like that. And each all they represent one of them. In that case, you have something which is flat, and the potential which is round. And you can solve the equation. You can solve really the, 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 the problem. Uh, it's a good, good computer. But you can solve it uh, and uh, it is much faster. And uh, so it is, that's the call, the fifth code, fifth for uh, uh, F for, for uh, scattering function F effective. What is the, what it did is the following. It takes uh, one each pass, you know, yeah, it is uh, it's like a play and the problem is that with FEF is so it's easy to handle that you play a zero game. I mean, you enter the structure. Here is the structure with uh, the central atom and, and uh, oxygen here and then this is for uh, a molecule. And then you say, you, you tell him, okay, uh, some control cards, calculate. And what is the in the case of complicated like that, that he has found, a John Rare has found a numeric, not an, an algebraic way to split the path with, at the middle. So in each, uh, each path is divided by, in, in, in two, and then in the scalp is scattered by T1, and then is divided, is scattered, and then he, may, he is able to describe all paths uh, around uh, you know this one, this one, and so on, and then it adds up everything and give the results is the zero order of what is uh, what is calculated by the path. And most most of the time you are using it. And first is able to calculate everything, and is able to calculate all the things that you need to analyze it. That's why now people are using this code, which is easy to render, to find all the phase sheet that you will need to analyze exhaust. Okay. So uh, and uh, in between, in between the two, the, the numerical solution and the, the past decomposition, um, you have uh, uh, an intermediate that FEF is doing also. That in a, in a limited environment, it makes the full multiplicity. It's able to calculate everything. Uh, all scattering, uh, it, it can be calculated. It's a matrix problem, but you calculate if the matrix is not wrong. Uh, when you go, when you want to 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 look at uh, atoms which are too far, it's not able to do one because it will take too long. Uh, so it takes the past the composition and not and keeps only the past which is which are the most important and for instance here uh, the, the code here tells you tells okay to first just uh, look at the past which have six legs not more not the past which are very 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 complicated between before coming back six legs only and look at uh, uh, component of paths which have which are uh, Three percent of the at least at least three percent of the most important important parts, which is the exhaust one. The other one are too small. It's a series. Uh, uh, multiple scattering is a series. A series in terms of uh, mathematics with uh, order zero, order one, order two, and so on and so on. And uh, uh, the terms are more and more are decreased. Uh, Actually, it was a problem at the beginning for, for a while. Uh, 
At the people who are thinking, okay, it's a sleep, but it's not a mathematics. Nobody knows exactly if it's a sleep. You don't know if uh, after some while, one term will be again with some uh, amplitude which is not negligible compared to them. And this is a little bit true. It's a little bit true because, uh, for instance, if you take a, a cube, the first simple cube, you have the first level where then you have a second which are somewhere and then you have the, the second which is exactly the double distance and this one is very important it's a far away but uh, the, of the process of going from here to here to here coming back starting by directly to here it's very important compared to other one so sometimes it can be a little bit tricky like that it's now is well known but uh, it's well known, but you have to, no, you don't have to remember, you have to realize if you read the, to the paper by a stern sayer, a writer on platinum, he did a Lexus study of platinum. It was not understood, he did not understand, they did not understand sex, uh, it, uh, why one peak was so important. Uh, he, he couldn't understand that and what. Because this peak was a contribution of the on the uh, multiple scattering with a second, uh, it's a fourth level. Okay. More though, so we now, if you do exhaust, we will uh, download the first. For a while it was free, it was free. It's no more longer more free, but it's not very expensive. And then you learn that to have all. Everything you need to analyze the data. Is uh, the multiple scattering important? Yes. Yes. Uh, look at that. Silicon, experimental uh, silicon is the red curve. If you analyze, uh, you, you only using uh, exhaust, you mean uh, taking care of the uh, back scattering by all the pumps, it's the first level. So on the term is one and so on, you get the gain curve. Okay. And if you do multiple scattering, you get the blue curve, which is very good compared uh, uh, above that is a little bit uh, not too bad, but at least at the beginning, you see that the blue curve is a good result, a good model of the experimental. Why uh, the green one is not good? That because in the multiple scattering there are components which are cancelling out uh, uh, com uh, components from uh, other paths. The, the two cancels out and they make the, the result here, which is which fits the data much in the. Okay. Ah, this uh, I told you that the polarization was not really important because most of the time. Uh, Sometimes uh, you can read because it's not another This is a case of that uh, probably uh, women know this ruby. And ruby is interesting because it's alumina corundum. It's a pure corundum, crystalline uh, uh, alumina with some chromium atoms inside. And he has a C axis, and this is the chromium, and this is the structure of moon. And if you do experiment, if you do uh, an absorption edge uh, spectrum of the chromium inside the alumina, and then you do the experiment with electric field like that compared to the center, or like that compared to the center, with electric field parallel to the C axis or perpendicular to the C axis. You see that you have two different, different results, very different results. And this is because the structure, the, the site of the chromium in the ruby is not at all centrosymmetric. He has an axis, it's very, uh, uh, the environment along this direction is very different from the environment along the vertical direction. This makes a difference. Okay? And sometimes it's very important, it can be very used uh, because of. The polarization of the of the light. Uh, this is this also. This uh, I start now some examples. Uh, I have two or three examples. This is 
So a lot of electrodes are uh, covered by sodium because it's a problem. So that's why we say that. And then uh, we did experiment, sure. And then we built a model where the, 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 the surface with the atoms of a titanium in blue, atom in oxygen in red, have one atom of, of sodium here, and uh, we move a little bit on the distance so to see what is the best and when you find I mean, with uh, several trial uh, errors we find the best result which means that uh, when the electric field is along this direction it's a Fourier transform this is one with mostly one peak uh, uh, here the dots are the experiment Black, the, the solid line is a model uh, starting from the fifth and building the model with the fifth, uh, fifth calculation with uh, this kind of environment, one atom and uh, several atoms of oxygen. When you make uh, now the, the same experiment with electric field around, around this direction, you have a different environment and you have a different exhaust uh, signature and you have a different result with uh, the same other. Uh, here is the same almost oxygen, but uh, the contribution of the, of the other atom are different. And this makes you the, you can have a good uh, description of the site by just two experiments, one in, with using the polarization. Uh, this is another example which uh, uh, for you, you are going maybe to do uh, clusters and things like that. This is uh, also still anatase. Uh, anatase is, is uh, another kind of uh, uh, titanium oxide. A uh, little bit not more. No, it's less complicated than the titanium. And uh, what is called nano anatase, which has been uh, fabricated by uh, a chemical process, clusters of anatase. Uh, all the all of six to twenty uh, inches of diameter, and now you realize that the small uh, small cluster the atoms don't have all the, the two hundred meters uh, of the of the bulk material because uh, the, the surface atoms are not exactly surrounded by exactly the same as the center. So you you have uh, something which is completely different, and is exactly what you find. That uh, this is anatase, and this is nano anatase is very much more simple because of the contribution of many, many, many atoms which are a little bit far away from the central atom are disappeared since they are surface atoms, there is nothing up there. And see, if you do the Fourier transform, you see that uh, the amplitude of the first peak, which is oxygen, has dropped a little bit because the atoms at the surface of the cluster are not surrounded by six uh, oxygen, they are surrounded by three or four. So in average, the coordination of oxygen will be a little bit decreased and the coordination of the further uh, shares are also decreased because, because the, the, the long, the, 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 there is no long range of that, it's only a short range of that. Uh, this also is uh, something that uh, Delphine uh, showed me, I did not know about that. Uh, is, there, is there something which is interesting to you? You see, is the only example with uh, uh, Ethereum. Um, no, it's different layers uh, uh, which are deposited on the surface. 
And uh, what is interesting is that uh, if this is a is a solution, and you see only uh, one peak, which is the contribution from the errors to the zone signal. It's uh, the signature of the error signature and nothing else, because there is nothing in the, in the solution. There is only the, the um, hydration cell, uh, cell around the, the nervous. If you deposit that on the, on the substrate, you see that there is the creation of uh, the terrace which is deposited on the surface and linked to uh, what is uh, manganese or iron and so on and so on, deposit the surface. Okay. Well, this is uh, something we did uh, which is uh, a little bit uh, funny. Is uh, uh, there are new results? Excuse me if I use uh, maybe many experiments that I, uh, I did. <laughs> it's easier to explain. Uh, that's a typical when you deposit a, a silver on different substances like uh, alumina, magnesium oxide, and C or silicon oxide. And uh, you, you realize that the, the, the jump at the edge you know, is on C scale is very, very small, 10 to the 3, smaller than the jump at the edge for metal, silver, or silver oxide. When you analyze the data and you look at the distance between two atoms of silver on the cluster as a function of the deposit, and then as a function of the deposit and the coordination number, you can have the size of the particle. And then if you plot the distance here between two silver atoms as a function of the size of the particle, the particle size here is the inverse of the particle size, you find this is on magnesium oxide. The, the curve, I draw the curve myself, just to, to show you the, uh, on alumina is something doing like that, on silica is doing like that. What it tells us? It tells that uh, when uh, you start from from a very, very small cluster, two atoms, three atoms, and so on and so on. Now, like that, they are very strongly linked. Okay? And when they start to go and they are deposited on the substrate, they start to feel the substrate, which is active on, on them. Each one, he wants to be linked, for instance, to oxygen in the substrate, or oxygen on alumina, oxygen on magnesium, and so on. And, and the, the the force, uh, which is called the detection force between the atoms, starts to be uh, dominant compared to the force which uh, wants uh, the atoms to be together. And that's why, look at that, when you go and you increase the size at one point between around the two nanometers, the interatomic distance is very compared as. as tend to be close to the distance of the substrate. The substrate imposes the atomic distance of the cluster. And then when the cluster is big, he comes back to his life, and then he goes back to the value to go to near the, the value of silver metal. This is true also in green. Alumina, the parameter of, of alumina is there. And you see that the parameter of the silver done in the cluster starts to decrease and then at the end it will be back. If you take a silica, silica is amorphous. So there is no way to, uh, to have an epitaxial uh, uh, press which imposes to the cluster to have a solid descent. So it's straight is a straight line, it's just a contraction which is well known when of the distance when the side becomes more and more. And this is right because it's uh, uh, philosophically speaking, I find that this is uh, the story of the of the human being. When he's very young, he has his own life, and then uh, at, at one point, <laughs> the parents uh, impose a way to look at the life. Okay, so it's uh, in this point, and then when the, the guy or the when the, the the person grows, 
And when he's 18 or something like that, he starts to be an adult. And then he has his own life, he comes back to his own life. And the girls are living like that. But okay, it's uh, just a job to finish. <laughs> that's, a resume. that's a resume of uh, what I told you. And that's all. Thank you. Do you need to call questions? Uh, Is there? Uh, <coughs> you forget that if you want to, have a, to ask a question that uh, you have during the night, uh, Camille and, uh, and no, no, uh, no, Delphine and Valerie. Uh, going back to exams, so you can ask uh, them tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, sure. Don't uh, don't try to ask a question now. Uh, I don't care if you have a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I think we can close today.